Jupiter at Night is presented live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. And my name is Jeremy. Now, tonight's episode is going to be a little bit self-indulgent because it's going to be about us. Uh, last night, as we were recording Jupiter at Night, about probably towards the very end of the episode... Well, many of you were here. Yeah, we were kind of building up the live stream. The traffic was high on our server, and our server crashed. The people that were watching live probably didn't even notice if they didn't reload their page. Yeah. And we went on, did the show we didn't know, and uh, we... Finished up, said goodnight to the folks, kicked on the live uh, stream reruns, walked back into the editing bay, <laughs> sat down and said, wait a minute, the website's down. <laughs> and then, of course, thankfully, this doesn't always happen because, you know, after Jupiter at night we're, and after, after a little post-show uh, mm-hmm. chat. We usually and hang stuff, out. And, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of late at night. And um, so it's about 11 o'clock at night before we even really notice. Right. And normally by that point in time, most of the team from Jupiter Broadcasting is offline. But luckily, most people were online. Uh, you know, Brian, Brian was, up. was up late coding last yep, night. Yep. yep, and you were up because you're always up late. And I was up late because the website was down. And, <laughs> uh, and then some of the other guys that we didn't have to wake up were actually still online too. But um, I, I started, Jeremy, Jeremy, can you get to the site? You know, Jeremy can't get to the website. Can't get to the website. We realized our server is actually down. And what happened was sort of the process I'll go through now with, with you guys. Um, it started really as kind of our fault. It was our bad. Was it? Yeah, it was. I didn't know this part. Well, I mean... I, I just basically got you through chat going, what the hell? Yeah. I can't fix it! <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm going to give you guys some tips to help you prevent this, but the first one I'm going to... Uh, you see that first one there on my list? It's uh, That's really kind of our fault. There's no oh. way around it. The server had been running for over 460 days without 460 a reboot. 460 days. That's almost a year and a half. Yeah. Wow. Can, can you guess why that is? Because you forgot to reboot it? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I admin service for a living. You think I forget? I'm watching that just oh. sitting there biting my nails. I was actually planning to give it a little TLC last weekend, and I didn't get an, a- an opportunity. Just last weekend? Yeah. Oh, whoa. Um, but no, it's just the on, on a podcast network, we're 24-7. It's always somebody's time That's to right. download somewhere in the world. Yeah. There's never a, like we watched the trends on our site. We were, I've been specifically trying to track it back to find a good time to work on our server. Mm-hmm. And I just simply did not see a downtime. And that, so then it's like, okay, well, who do I want to screw? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to make that decision and then the server just kind of made the decision for us. So the first part was, it was our everybody. <laughs> so it is an older server, but we, it looks like it was probably just uh, some sort of crash. We haven't actually gone through all the logs yet to find the out. The scary part, though, was that after putting in a ticket and getting an almost immediate response, that was yeah. pretty cool from the fo- folks that host it. Yeah. Um, it still took like two two hours plus before we yeah. finally got our server yeah. back up and lo- online and functioning. Yeah, it did a reboot and a check disk and... Um, and, or an FSCK, because mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a Debian box. Um, <clears throat> and it was nail-biting because we didn't know if we had a bad drive, a bad controller, and, you know, it's not anywhere near us. But we weren't using proper backups. We didn't. We thought we were. And we'll get into that. We thought the backups were, were looking good. Of course, then we go to pull the backups to do a, a potential restore, and, well, lo and behold, we had good database backups, but we didn't have any backups of the actual website. The backup had failed. It had been failing. Ah, yeah. It so it reported it's successful too, which is awesome. <laughs> um, now, fortunately, that didn't end up boning us in the A, but it very right. well could have. Right. We would have lost all of our back show yeah. notes, yep. all of the art that we had uploaded for yeah. the episodes. We'd stills. have to go get all of that from the original source. The episodes place. themselves would would still be available. Yeah, you know, thankfully, the, the way it, it one the one way we kind of do things is we have our server, and that's really only hosting just our uh, WordPress site, and um, that's about it. And yeah. that's been highly cached so that uh, we can run that pretty much with very low impact on our server. Mm-hmm. And then all of the other high, you know, high uh, large file size stuff is all on different networks, right. content distribution networks, mm-hmm. and YouTube and things like that. So while the main site was down, all the RSS feeds still worked. And, and you could still get to the videos from YouTube. In fact, yeah. that ended up having last night's Jupiter at Night was on YouTube before it was on our own site. Yeah, yeah. It was just kind of, it was like, okay, I'm ready to post the show, but I don't have a <laughs> website. Uh, the other problem, I think the other mistake we made is there's no alerting in place. Now, this is uh, something that you guys might want to go over to the show notes for. At the very bottom of the show notes, we threw in a link in there for a free website monitoring service. And it'll actually monitor anything, um, like an email service. Uh, it'll check any port you want. It can do all kinds, like it'll check uh, phone systems. It's pretty cool. And it doesn't even have to be your site. No, no. So it's free, can, and then you can get, like, you can buy SMS 
and other features like that. That's neat. Yeah, so check it out. Uh, so yeah. really, we were having to rely on each other and the the general Jupiter public, our Twitter audience. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, you said we should talk about this and kind of turn it into a way to maybe move people Absolutely, to a situation where they're in a little better spot. We had yeah. some news come out that sounds seems like this kind of thing happens more and more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude. God, and not uh, always and under your control. I mean, we're talking no. a lot about data you can control. This is that's the key point. Uh, you know, I've always thought of backing up as something that I have to take care of my own personal data yeah. on a one-on-one basis. But if you think about it, uh, this is something that has to be done remotely as well because a lot of your stuff is stored in in the cloud. They might call yeah, it exactly. And you know, there's there's been a the couple of stories that came out just in the last couple of days regarding data loss. One out of Florida State College. So if you're going back to school, this might be something to think about um, because. Again, the data records that they have, you also need to be cognizant of so that way you're, it's not always the data you have under your control. Mm -hmm. uh, they had 30,000 students with various different records that were lost due to a software upgrade that basically published the information to the web and then was searchable. And they only found out after students started mentioning, hey, I'm finding people's stuff on Google. Right. Whoa. Now, actually, this led me to to start Googling myself again. I used to do this. I know it sounds kind of self-indulgent, a, a vanity search is what they call it. But uh, you know, if you think that you're being good about keeping your personal identif identity identity yeah. private on the internet, mm -hmm. it might not be a bad idea to do those vanity searches now, you, on occasion. Now, you searched for yourself, but what I think you probably should have searched for is also some of your online handles. Of course, yeah, yeah, and that's always that always finds some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. I searched for some of mine, and I find stuff from really, really old stuff all over the place. Yep. It's kind of wild. I have done it for a while but uh the other the other t now this moves us into backups in general for yourself because there's a story that came out for um if you guys have heard of Evernote, it's sort of like the online memory service where you're supposed to be able to record everything in there. They've got a web version, they've got clients for the iPhone, for Android, for Blackberries and mm -hmm. for desktops except for Linux. Um, but they also suffered a data loss. Even with all of the redundancy they have set up, uh, they lost about 6,000 users data. Uh, they have not all of their data. No, no, no. Just Only anything that was trying to be accessed during this period of time. Over a four-day period of time. Uh, and you had to be accessing it, though, through their website, not using one of the client versions. But otherwise, you, the client would reset. You mentioned earlier there's no uh, Linux client. So right. anybody that uses this on Linux has to use it through their web client. And I think they just surpassed, like, just today. I think they just hit 6 million users. So, you know, 6,000 people really isn't that many. They, they, and they did a really good job of explaining what goes on. But still, four-day window and this is a company Oof. and this is a company i've used for years but this is a company who is built around storing your data and mm -hmm. they had this happen yeah so you really have to be mindful when you're doing this cloud computing type storage uh of your data and to that end uh jeremy you and i have been wanting to talk about this backupify service probably since before we even really started the show yeah, I think you had it in the show notes for during like our beta episodes. Yeah, and we've been trying to wait for the right episode because you and I especially were big Google Docs users. We're oh, big yeah. Gmail users. Got yep. all our stuff in there. I mean, really, you, you you have all. Do you write entirely in Google Docs for even your yeah. personal stuff? Yes, yeah, I'm the same way. I, I you know I don't. I used to have Microsoft Office installed on an old OS, but I sure. when I switched to Windows Seven, I yeah. tried Open Office. Yeah. Hate it. Yeah, I know there's folks out there that enjoy it, but I hate it. I don't mind it for actually. Sometimes I find when I'm doing a lot of long writing, I actually prefer Open Office. But when I'm just Maybe. doing a lot of like one pages and stuff, I can't get used to it. So I switched entirely to Google Docs. That's what I do too. Yeah. So now there's a big, 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 big downside to that. Not only does Google have all my information, which you know I'm I'm kind of paranoid about that on some level, but also you know if anybody ever happened to steal my Google identity, yeah. And use it for some nefarious purpose. Google can you shut know, like, your account down. Yeah, they can and that shut happens. down. And not just shut me down, but lock out all of my information, maybe even delete it. I don't know. Yeah, and it's it's kind of scary because it's it's across all of the services. That's you know mm -hmm. nice thing is that your login on Google is your YouTube, your Gmail, your Google Docs, your Picasa if you have that. Mm -hmm. But if they flip that switch, you're out everywhere, and you need to get your data. Uh, and thing from things like Evernote and every, other things like mm -hmm. that. That's really what Backupify is. Is it's backup for the cloud. It's not backup for your computer. It's backup for your online services. And they do, like, everything there. I have some of the services listed there, but... They back um, up all of your social ac site yeah. accounts. That I found that really interesting, and I asked you to show me what it does with your Twitter stuff. And it's really cool. It We... We were looking through it earlier. You can download every tweet you've ever made yeah. in like a PDF book format. They call it the book format. Or you can get like the raw output. Mm -hmm. And then you can also you can back up Flickr and Facebook, and it'll back up. Like on Facebook, it backs up images. Anything tagged up, with you. Anything tagged with you, anything you've posted, mm -hmm. any threads that you've been involved in, they all get backed up. Uh, backs up your entire Twitter mentions, ats, uh, your tweets. Yeah. 
It's and great. I mean, it's it, pretty cool. It really is a complete solution to finding everything that you're storing on the internet. And of course, it backs up all the Google stuff. I mean, Google yeah. Calendar, Google Docs, Picasa, mm-hmm. Google Contacts. That's a and I think the important nice one. one that we should probably start looking into is this can back up WordPress. Actually, this is how you were backing up. I was, WordPress. and I want to make a caveat because we're kind of uh, we're kind of heaping praise on Backupify, and we've got a link to Backupify in the show notes. Mm-hmm. And I've been a user for uh, since they were in a private beta. I was invited and. Uh, I've been using it, pro- so I think for over a year, but I'm not positive on that. And uh, they do have they 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 back up everything that's online, including WordPress, a hosted or your own site. Mm-hmm. It, it's a they have it in conjunction with a plugin. That's still it, in beta. It's still in beta, and what it was getting our SQL backups, but it was not getting our our WordPress HTML file backups. But it, it was, was supposed to be. But it was, it, this yeah. is what we were saying earlier: yeah. the backup we thought we were getting. We weren't getting. So I've opened a ticket with backup of five. We're gonna kind of work get to the bottom of that. But I realized something too on my on 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 our site, mm-hmm. the the WordPress installation alone isn't enough. There's a lot of files outside WordPress yeah. that are also used. Plug-ins and so it wouldn't and, yeah. have been a complete backup anyways. Well, we would have had the main like show notes and stuff though. Which yeah, would have been key. But we had the database. That was really the that. Can was you the imagine having maker. to go back through all that hand by hand and maybe reposting it all? It would. Uh, I would probably have to hire people. I yeah. would think. Um, and then. So it wasn't perfect, backup of five. Yeah, but it's got its faults. As far as like all of the other online cloud services, it's been running great for me for a while. You're going to try it. I am going to try it. It's cheap, and if you already have an S3 it's account, free. you can use it free. It's free, You're free actually. up to two gigs. Two gigs, right. If you, like Amazon S3, uh, I've got an S3 you can account plug that into it and basically get unlimited storage yeah, using their free pay for account. S3, and then you get a free. Yeah, it's great, and that's what exactly what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I've got all the docs in there now, which I feel good about, and I've got all my other stuff in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little more comfortable that, about that. So now I thought, let's move on to, to local machine backups. Now, this is an area that I suck at. Do you? I do. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I even, too, you know, uh, what was it, like a month ago, I talked about having to go through all those old hard drives yeah. and pull the documents It was like off one of our, uh, like, number episode one or, or three or so of Jupiter yeah. Night. So you'd think after going through that, I might start taking care of my backups. No, yeah. I suck. I'm not very good about it. I do backups. Now, though, caveat, you and I, at least you know, with the, with the all the network stuff internally, we're huge Dropbox users. Yeah, and there's built-in backup to that. And you know, honestly, the Google stuff, the 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 cloud storage stuff, is probably seventy-five to eighty yeah, percent yeah. of my total workload. Yeah. You know, yeah. of everything that I want to not lose to a hard drive crash is mm-hmm. probably eighty percent or more where, is on the cloud where already. I'm, where I'm still hung up is my music collection. My pictures, and you know, to a, to a lesser extent, my video collection. I can't really; it's not practical for me to back up my video collection. But I know for a lot of people, it's yeah. practical. And there's a really, really cool software that I've never personally used, but I've talked to the developers, I've looked at it, I've heard from a lot of Jupiter Broadcasting audience members that have used it. But I can't personally say it's good. But I, I've heard a lot of great stuff. It's called Crash Plan, and I'm a multi OS guy. I run all three primary mm-hmm. main OSs. They have a Mac, Windows, and Linux version. It's handy. They let you use it for personal use for free. I think there's probably some sort of limit in terms of total storage, mm. but they do let you do it, and that's really cool. The other thing that's free is machine-to-machine sync. Oh, cool. So, like, for example, you and I could have crash plan machines, a- uh, agents installed on our machines, and we could... If, if we've, kind if we of didn't, like a pseudo Dropbox sort of thing? Then? Or, a, or a pseudo offsite backup without having to pay for unlimited oh, storage. Right. Because they'll do something like eight bucks a month, you get completely unlimited storage is what they say. And I, I, I asked them, because I was really trying to get my head around this. Could I up? Could I? Could I upload five terabytes of data to you? Mm-hmm. I said, if you can get it to us, actually, let, <laughs> they'll let you. Um, I've got files, bitches. <laughs> they'll say, actually, for for large uploads, they they uh, have you uh, seed them a hard drive. Oh, and so you send them, and then they they can preload it if you want. Hmm. Uh, but we could, we could, and or if you had a family member, you could have a you could have a family member's computer backup to you, and vice versa. Oh, a lot of people have high bandwidth. That's totally free. It'll also do backup to a USB drive. And offsite and the sync for free, so it's cool. It's my cool brother out. has terrible luck with hard drives. That's why I was doing that whole thing recently. Is he goes I've through them the all stories, the time? Dude, so yep. <laughs> I, that might be a great idea to have him like back up to either mine or maybe my parents or something yeah. like that. Just have him an, an offsite backup. Well, I was just doing a. Uh, I was just doing a Linux uh, home server build part one and two for the Linux Action Show. Mm-hmm. It totally dawned on me that you could do this sync to sync even on your own machines in your local network. Right. So I could install it on my server and on my main desktop, and I could have my server and my main desktop sync to each other because I've got a ton of storage on both. Right. So why not back each other up? Yeah. So uh, it doesn't have to be over the internet either, but it is nice if you do want something completely off site. And the fact that Crash Plan lets you do it for free and for any operating system that you'd p- likely be using, mm-hmm. it's, it's a big now, win. I get the feeling that this um, is not 
quite as widespread use, which yeah, is probably why they're not stating their hard limits and stuff it's like not, that. It's not like your Carbonite or, or Mosey's, but I actually I think that makes them a little more hungry, and, and I like their offering a little better. Yeah, I, that's not really what I'm getting at. I'm, I'm oh, okay. just saying that that's why they don't list, like, you can only have one terabyte of storage. Because, you know, if they've got a large data, data center with plenty of room, why not use it? Exactly. But if they don't have much room, they don't want to go around I actually, my suspicion, advertising that they're short on space. I, my suspicion, based on their pricing model, Mm -hmm. uh, as a dis personal disclaimer, um, I work for an IT company in Washington that does online backup for our clients, and I've I'm seeing similarities in pricing structure here. And uh, what I believe it is is they are they are using S3, and then they're doing a slight markup, which Amazon lets you just oh. automatically do. Yeah. And so their their storage is essentially infinite because they're relying on Amazon, which Amazon just has crazy storage they keep adding, and they just provide a really nice front-end API and packaging. Well, they've got to keep adding enough room to because eventually those AIs are going to take up a lot of space. Yeah. They're going to need plenty of... Oh, yeah, the Skynet's got to back up somewhere <laughs> big, dude. you got to have a lot of storage for Skynet. Uh, and... Uh, before people jump down my throat about the S3 comment, you can't really back up to S3 directly yourself without some sort of front-end software. Right. So this crash plan is one way. To, there's other things like Jungle Disk out there. That's the one I use currently. Um, but uh, I, I really like uh, what crash plans offer. I'm going to have to do some of this because, you know, I could go home tonight after the show and find out that my computer yeah. at home was effed somehow. And, you know, the, with the stats, I believe, if I recall, this is off the top of my head, but I think it's in the first 90 days, and then after 90 days... Uh, it's it's uh, the percentage chance of of, of, drops of drive off. crashing. Yeah. After ninety days, it drops down till about three years, and it starts to go up. And then by five years, it's like when it, it's most likely from five years on. How old is that computer? I think you're kind of in the four year range. Oh crap! Uh, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, buddy. You might want to check out the crash plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, uh, we'd love to hear your backup tips, suggestions, or ideas. So you can leave those over at jupitercolony.com or put them in the comments anywhere you'd like to. We try to check them all. There's still um, people out there that do the old school, just burn the entire drive to a DVD and then stuff it in hey, a desk drawer. You but. know, uh, there is, if you're a Security Now listener, I, I've heard it a hundred times, but I believe Steve Gibson, who's like got to be in his 60s or close to it, uh, still burns CDs mm -hmm. and mails them to his mom. And that works. You know, it, it does. And it keeps it secure. Because yeah. who can you trust if not your mother? Exactly. I'm sure he encrypts it with something like TrueCrypt. He's probably safe. <laughs> um, so maybe maybe you've got a, a technique like that. So just let us know. We'd love to catch that. And remember, you can watch Jupiter at Night live Monday through Thursday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live. And if you tune in a little early, say maybe around 8.30, 8.40, you'll probably catch the pre-show with my wife and usually Jeremy here. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes uh, you. Yeah, sometimes me. And it's just kind of some hang out and chat and look at some funny stories before Jupiter Night. Now, tonight, Tuesday... Uh, after the show, if you guys are in the live stream right now, stick around to watch a live taping of the Northwest Goofballs, yeah. our new audio sports show. Right now, I think yeah. it's all about football, but I think later in the year, they'll be doing basketball They're going to do, uh, well, football's like, uh, these guys, I think their main passion is yeah. football. And then they're going to transition to football after the season. You know, I'm like I'm not a big sports junkie, but I've listened to to portions of this podcast you basically sucks you until in. I get lost. But these guys have great chemistry. They know yeah. what they're talking about. If you're into it, this is a definitely a show for you. You can go check out episode one and two. Those are up over at Jupiter Broadcasting.com, and again, that was the Northwest Goofballs. Now, yeah, I think that's all the self-plugging we have to do, other than <laughs> if you like the show, let somebody know. We'd love to spread the word. Let everybody know. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow night on Jupiter at night. <laughs>